11, 12. Mic test. Checking. Good evening, everyone. Give me a few seconds, well, minutes, sorry, because I need to sort out a new technical setup for our TikTok, <laughs> which might take a few, hopefully not too many minutes. Good evening. I'm just going to float this for a bit. Gosh, I hope this one works on TikTok. So our plan for tonight is that whatever are our participants seeing on the Facebook Live, they will also be able to see it on their TikTok screens. So don't, no, don't worry about me right now. I'm going to buy some few seconds. You might be also wondering why am I doing the session too early? It is because I need to sleep early also tonight. I have a workshop tomorrow in Batangas and I need to leave at around 6 a.m. So that's going to be a challenging task. Gosh, this one's not working, huh? Let me look at the participants first uh, on Facebook. By the way, Participants, are you guys liking my new layout for my <laughs> online live for my live session? We've made it very work uh, hard working, so we get to sell a lot of things that we need to sell here. Oh, there you go. Finally, I'll be able to show this now. Mic test. Just give me a few seconds, guys, because we need to set this up on TikTok. Mic test one, two, three. Let me just. Mic test one, two, three. Oh, there you go. I think it's working. Working. One, two, three. Okay. Dares Jim C from LinkedIn is saying hello. Sana makakuha ng ticket for the convention. Okay. Let's see if that's going to work later on. Okay. I'm going to go live now on TikTok. I hope this one works. I, again, my intention. Sorry, guys. I'm making you as a guinea pig for this. My goal is that anything that you see on Facebook will also be mirrored on TikTok at the same time. That's our ultimate goal. Okay. Yes, I think we're live and I think we're also audible. Catherine says hello, watching from Bacoor. Prince says hello, watching from Cebu. Thank you for joining our session for tonight. I'm just going to do, do a quick attendance check. Mabel, as usual, is also present from YouTube. Mabel, who, by the way, I notice always wins because we don't have a lot of viewers on YouTube. So you get to be the winner. Uh, Laila says, Magandang gabi po. Thank you for joining our session as well. Kimberly also says, hello, good evening. Oh, the mic is covering my face, is it? Wait, let me see, huh? I don't think it's... Can I get an exclamation mark if my microphone is... All good. Is it totally covering my face? I hope this is fine. Is it? Could you please let me know? All good? Yes? All good? Pinaghirapan namin yan yung layout na yan. I hope that's okay with you guys. We need to display as many as possible. So I don't need to keep on pushing too many buttons when I need to change it. Okay. You may be noticing as well that tonight's topic is going to be a very, I don't want to say dramatic, but this is something that I think is, how do I say this? This is something that I think a lot of people can relate to. And tonight's session is going to be about handling rejections. Okay, Can I get the letter R if you guys are ready to talk about this? It's going to be about handling rejections. All good? Yes? Are you guys okay with that topic? So I chose this topic because I think at some point in our careers, we all are going to experience rejections. It could be about re being rejected for your job interview. It could be about being rejected for a promotion, a rejection for, let's say, a pitch, a rejection for, let's say, a project that you've been asking for, 
whatever it is. So the question now is, number one, if you get rejected, what do you do about it? How do you manage your emotions? How do you cope? And number two, which I think is the most important part, how do you bounce back from that rejection as well? So as usual, we're going to be asking our participants to please uh, type as many questions as you can, which refers to rejection. And if you also can, don't limit it to just rejection. You can also ask questions about conflicts with your colleagues, with your bosses. It could be about applying for a new job. It could be a question about job interview. It could be a question about leadership. So we're all going to be asking these questions in a while. Okay? All good? Gladiators in suits? I hope that's all good with you. Yes? Okay. So, by the way, I haven't shaved yet. Um, can I ask an aesthetic question? Is it okay that I have like a beard like this or should I let it go? Should I shave it? This happens every four or five days. Sorry, yeah. Mababo na question. Just wanted to ask that part. Okay. Ayan. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to do more. Uh, attendance check. Ted Malbar says, hello, good morning, also from Alberta in Canada. Okay, people are telling me to shave down. Bye. Moha ba akong totoy? Is that the reason why? It's fine. Okay, but Millie on TikTok says, shave. Patty says, also shave. Okay, that's fine. Keep it down, sabi ni Aaron. Okay. Jason says, shave. Okay. Moha akong totoy, no? Do I look like a 20-year-old kid? Kimberly says, looks good to me. Okay. Um, just to be safe, I think I'm going to shave it. Okay. Gladiators in suits. I think I have a good handful of questions now. And I want to raise some of the questions now from the chat box. Again, as usual, just type your questions. We'll find a way to be able to answer as many questions as we can. I'm going to add this uh, comment from Maybel Kasiple from YouTube. And she says, I have received a number of application rejections these past few days, past few weeks, before I would get depressed, but I learned that acceptance is always the key and to move forward. Yes. They say that humans have what we call as a time horizon. What does that mean? A time horizon is when some people are forward-looking. They're always anticipating what's going to happen in the future, which can be a good thing because that means they're always prepared. The bad thing is that they can also be anxious often. I think I fall under that category. Some people are always in the present. They enjoy the moment. But also, because they're always present-oriented, their tendency is to miss out what they need to prepare for or to anticipate in the future. They also do not hold, they do not let the past help them be better because they easily forget about it. And then there are some people who are very driven by the past, meaning they can't let go, they can't move on. And these are the people who, the disadvantage of it is that their tendency is to always think that something that happened to them in the past defines who they are and determines what they're capable of in the future. Again, don't get me wrong. I think it's a good thing to talk about, to always cherish the past. But the past is past, right? You can only count the number of hours that has, have gone by. I think the ultimate goal at the end of the day is to identify what do I do now? How can I enjoy now? And how can I enjoy more of it by working on it for the future's sake? Okay? So, yeah, I'm the type who is very future-oriented. So my tendency is to... I will learn from the past. Oh, here's the problem. When I become future-oriented, I tend not to enjoy the moment. So for example, like I'm eating and it's my favorite meal. Instead of enjoying how delicious my meal is, while eating, I'm thinking of what do I need to do in the next two hours? What do I need to do in the next four hours? And I tend to, you know, I tend to avoid, I tend to miss out in savoring that very moment. Could you please type in the chat box? I would love to know your thoughts. Are you... Driven by the future, driven by the past, or are you driven by the present? I'd love to know where you guys fall into. 
Franklin Jones says, hello, magandang gabi from India. Thank you for joining us. JB says, hello, watching from uh, Saudi Arabia. Thank you also for joining us. Oh, there's a delay daw in my video on TikTok. You know, here's my problem with TikTok. I think every time I use TikTok, and I guess I just need to change my here, my live session here. Every time I use some items on the screen on TikTok, it just goes away. So I think I'm just going to change my layout and go back to the normal part. So TikTok folks, I'm just going to end this quickly. Give me a few seconds. I'm going to go back to the normal mode. Okay? Okay. While we're doing that, we have some folks here. Uh, let's cover their answers. Louis Aviles says future-oriented. Catherine says driven by the past. Okay. Sorry, bigla mo may nag echo Okay. Yvonne, when I'm eating lunch, I'm already thinking of dinner. <laughs> Can I just show that? Yvonne says, when I'm eating lunch, I'm already thinking of dinner. That's fine. I think it's too far away from the hours though. Melvin Matos says, I'm driven by the present, but I'm still affected by the past. Okay. That's also cool. Thank you. Folks are, some folks are asking me what's, what are the dates on my right side. We are going to give away tickets since we're about to uh, answer some questions now. We are about to give away some tickets to our upcoming workshops that are going to be conducted at the SMX Convention Center in SM Aura. So on my right side are the dates. I'm going to give away tickets to all the five sessions for our participants. Can I get a letter P if you guys are up for that? I'm going to be asking a quick trivia question. We're going to do that in the middle of our workshop. I hope that's okay with you guys. Yes. That's why they're displayed. Also, if you're interested, so you will see that at the top part, that is the website where you can get our tickets. If you want, you can also scan the QR code found at the bottom of the screen. Okay, Ayan. I hope that you guys aren't just here because you're after the prizes. <laughs> Give me an exclamation mark. If that is the only thing, I hope it's not. Wait, let me just fix now my Twitter. Uh, my, how do you call this? My TikTok. Are we back live now? I think we are on TikTok. Yes. There you go. Okay. Sorry for the quick uh, TikTok, folks. I'm finally back, and I hope you guys are able to catch us quickly. Okay, let me answer some questions now. This is from Matt Estacion from LinkedIn. Matt is asking, sir, I have a question. I have graduated almost a year now. I have a degree in entrepreneurship and I am taking part in our family business. But somehow I don't feel happy and satisfied because me and my father don't have the same vision. Okay, probably different vision for the products or the direction of the business. It's frustrating for both of us. I want to grow my career and expand my skills and knowledge. And as of now, I'm having a hard time finding a right job for me to start. Okay, I feel kind of lost. Okay, Matt, this is a classic challenge that I think a lot of fresh graduates experience. My, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my take as someone who entered the corporate world and also went to the entrepreneurship world. My take is that your first job will usually dictate and will strongly influence your future jobs. And why am I saying that? It is in your first job that you will have your first taste of having a boss, your first taste of using the email, your first taste of using messengers. They will heavily dictate the way you communicate and the way you expect people to work with you. So if you're going to be choosing whatever job that is, please choose a job that has a solid foundation when it comes to nurturing their employees. So I would strongly recommend, and this is just my bias, I'd go for a big multinational company or a large Filipino-owned company that has a lot of structures and is very well known for a culture of training. Can I get an exclamation mark if our participants can appreciate that? And I'm saying that because if you end up applying for your first job in a really bad one, small company, pay is very bad, there's a lot of politics that's happening, it can traumatize you. It can also influence you to become like that. It might also change the way you perceive what entrepreneurship should be. 
when you get to be exposed in a bigger company, you get to be exposed with more people with different perspectives. And those learnings, I think, are going to be very beneficial when you end up becoming part of your father's business later on. Okay? I don't think you should, for now, because I think you're still young, I don't think you should worry so much about the vision. People change. You still have a lot of years ahead of you. I think by that time when technology has significantly changed, your father probably may be aligned with, what's, with what you also want to happen. Okay? I hope that works, Matt. Thank you for that question. Let's look for some more question in the chat box. Okay, this is Jason Mark Kalunod from LinkedIn. Let's answer this question. And Jason is asking, John, I am waiting for my promotion two years now. However, I cannot sense that it will happen. Any reaction on this, please? Well, number one, I think you need to hold your manager accountable more than anything else. Promotions are influenced and are decided by your manager, by your boss, the boss of your boss. It could also be decided by a promotional board composed of other senior managers, including HR. Somehow, you should have an idea if you're going to get promoted or not if you are meeting the metrics that are set by the company. Here's my problem, Jason. If your company does not have any metrics to begin with, I think it's a red flag. Because that means that the promotions in the company are not determined based on objective standards. Did I reach the sales target? Was I prompt in my reports? Was I able to fulfill X, Y, and Z? If these things are not present, then people promote based on subjectivity. Who's the best friend of the owner? Who's closest with HR? Who always gives away free coffee, for example? You don't want your promotions to be based on that. Okay? So maybe you can tell me what's the reason why you don't sense that this is going to happen at all. Let me just, wait, fix my, oh, there you go, my TikTok. TikTok, folks, before I continue, can I get the letter T if I'm all good, loud and clear, and also audible? Just want to check. Facebook folks are asking, ano ba yan si Jonathan? Puro mas maalaga sa TikTok. Of course, I mean, there's more of them on the platform. <laughs> That's why. By the way, before we go to the next question, could you please give us a, a heart or a like? We will appreciate that, please. It's the only thing that we ask from our participants when whenever we do these sessions. Thank you. Ayan. Okay. People are hearing me loud and clear. Um, let's answer some more questions. Someone's asking, is it true that your session is on June 24, Saturday? Yes, it is. It is on a Saturday. And the reason for that is because we want others to be able to attend if in case they have jobs, and most of us do, on a weekday. Okay, Sige. let me cover a question this time on TikTok. Okay, I am going to take this question. Okay, this is a question from Belinda on TikTok. Belinda's question is, Mr. John, I have been in the company. Sorry, I just applied for a company and finished my job interview a month ago. Okay. I haven't heard yet from the recruiter. And I have sent them an email twice now following up if I got the job. I so desperately want to get this job because this is my dream company, but it has been a month now and I haven't heard from them. Does this mean that I should already move on to other companies that I have applied for? Okay, two things. Number one, uh, Belinda, this statement makes me gives me the impression that you are only banking in one company, which I think is a bad thing. And I'm saying that because job applications are like a raffle. The more entries that you put out there, the higher chances of winning. So please do not put all of your eggs in one basket. When you are in job hunting mode, I would go for 10, 15, or 20 companies that I can apply for. Of course, please customize your resume. Depending on what the company is known for and what they like, change some items in your resume that will 
likely be the apple of the eye of the recruiter who's scanning it. Okay? But please, do not just apply for one company. Even if this is your dream job, please, don't waste your time. You have to apply for as many companies as you can. We're lucky. We're not even dropping envelopes anymore. That was the 1980s way. We're now just clicking buttons from one company to another. So please spread yourself across different applications. Number two, if a company really wants you so bad, and if a company decides that they are going to take you in, just like any romantic relationship, they will never give an excuse to delay contacting you. If they want you, they will not make you chase. Okay? So you're not going to like what I'm going to say here, but it's been a month. And in most applications, it probably can only take weeks. Also, before you even make conclusions, try to... How do I say this? If you do your next job interviews, after the job interview, do not end the conversation without asking the interviewer, thank you for the opportunity. May I ask, when will the decisions be announced? When will the applicant be notified? It's always important to know that so that you have an idea and a timeline if you have missed the boat. Okay? Sometimes companies will take one month or two months to search. So I don't think that you have already missed the boat. Maybe they are still searching for other candidates. In fact, if you go to Job Street and LinkedIn, sometimes they place the deadline of applications. So you probably applied on May 15, but it states there that the deadline of applications is July 15. It's only what? June 8. There's still time. So even if you keep on following up, I don't think they will reply immediately because they're still looking for other applicants. Can I get an exclamation mark if that's clear? Okay. Now, here's the part that I think you don't want to hear. And, but I hope you don't hear this. Okay. If it's already July 15 and you've gone past beyond the deadline of applications and you still haven't heard from them, it's already August, it's already September, then I think you should move on. And that's where you need to refocus your energy on other companies that you can be eligible to apply. Okay? Companies are very efficient. At some point, you know, if they like you, they will just skip. If they like you, they will send you a message afterwards. Right? parang it's just like any romantic relationships. If you if you're asking someone for a date, right? If you're asking someone for a date, if they really like you, they're gonna message back. Right? Up here, tama? they're going to message back. They're not going to make you chase them. Because if they really want you, they will not give any excuse. They will let you know that they like you. Companies usually are also like this. Of course, don't get me wrong. There are really bad companies out there that, in which the HR recruiters are just so incompetent. I've met some of them in my life as well, such that, you are already the approved one, and yet they're still not contacting you because they got other things to do. Okay? So wait for a bit. Maybe check the deadline of applications. That's one. And number two, if it's been two months, I think you should move on and focus that energy because, by the way, it's a source of learning. Try to identify what's the reason why you, th why you think you weren't able to get the job. Not all recruiters are going to give you the reasons why, but you can always think of what could have happened in that session. Okay? Oh, 1010 from TikTok says, you should move on. Wag na raw umasa. Right? Wag tayo umasa. Pinapaasa lang tayo. There are so many other companies out there that are waiting for you and potentially can convert you into a rock star. Okay? Focus your energy. Invest in people. Invest in companies that also want to invest in you. Okay? And of course, I think more than anything else, you will not have this type of feeling if you put your eggs in different baskets. If you keep your hopes too high in only one company, you will really be disappointed if you only think that you should be gunning for that job. Okay? Okay, let's look for some more questions. Oh, Christer. Christer, medyo, I think medyo matagal na masyadong mabilis to. Christer Miroy says, I have a one-week rule. If I haven't heard from them, from the, time, from the time frame, move on. 
I think one week, okay, depends on your experience, but I think one week can be too short. I would always ask the recruiter, may I ask, when will the successful candidate be notified? Because some recruiters, especially the amazing ones, the good ones, will tell you, John, we're going to let you know by end of the month and we will only inform the successful candidate. For efficiency purposes, they no longer contact the ones that are not taken in, which is fine. I mean, if there are 4,000 applicants, it's hard to notify all 4,000 applicants as well. Okay. YouTube, Erica de la Peña says this. My aspirations are visible in our system. They always say that sayang because someone else has been put in the role already. What can I do to avoid it from happening again? Okay, Erica, I'm going to change your question here. I think your concern is I've always wanted certain positions in the company, but it seems like I'm not getting them because someone has already filled in the position. Okay, sometimes I'm always too late. Sometimes I did not make it because my qualifications were not in time. Okay? In any organization, I think it's important to be very vocal with what you want. So this is where letting the universe know is as important as getting that role successfully. Can I get an exclamation mark if you can relate to that? What do I mean by vocalizing? Number one, in your annual evaluation meetings with your manager, and your manager asks about how are you doing, here's what I think your performance is, you have to be clear to your manager and specify that in the next 12 months or 18 months or two years, and please do not feel ashamed saying this because it is your right and obligation, tell them that you do want to advance the ranks. Okay? If you have a manager who's going to call you out and will tell you that you are too ambitious, that you are delusional, again, it's a red flag. No manager should be pricking your balloon and popping it and saying that you do not have the right to dream high and dream big. Okay? Managers must be very supportive of what their people want to do in their future careers. So I would vocalize this. Okay? I would not only vocalize this to my manager. If you have opportunities to talk to your HR business partners, if you have opportunities to talk to other senior leaders, tell it to them. And yes, I totally agree. Sometimes it involves a little bit of acting. Can I get a letter A? If you can relate to what I'm talking about. What do I mean, John? What do you mean by acting? When I say acting, you have to admit that it's not easy to insert these types of topics into any conversation. You don't just bump into someone at the water cooler and say, hey, boss, I want to get promoted next year. Or you don't just tell to the HR manager and say, hey, Anna, How's your weekend? By the way, I want to get promoted in the next two years. You don't. You wait for the right time. You prolong the conversation. And then you find a way to connect the topic that you're talking about to your promotion wishes. Okay? It does involve a lot of art. It involves a lot of small talk politics. I, I, I will embrace that. And that is life. Because the currency of success is the ability to be visible and the ability to also buy time. So when these conversations happen, like, you know, if I bump into my HR, and again, I'm speaking from a place of privilege because I was able to work in amazing companies where HR managers call themselves as talent managers. When I bump into them at the elevator, I will not hesitate to say, hey, Anna, by the way, can I have a chat with you, like a 30-minute chat? over coffee. I just want to share, uh, it's mid-year. It's already June, July. I want to share uh, some thoughts about my role and some thoughts about my career progression in the organization. And if you have an amazing HR, they will find time to have coffee with you, sit down with you, and share your thoughts. Why is this important? Because even if Anna, who is your HR manager, is not the one who's going to promote you, just the fact that she knows about your aspirations in her future small talk conversations with other HR managers, she will have an opportunity to mention this during lunch, during her business trip with the boss of her boss. And the small anecdotes are important because if the words, if those information get passed on to one person to another, then people will act accordingly to how you want to be treated. Ah, okay. 
Sheila, huh? She wants to get promoted? Well, let's see. Let's talk to her manager as well and see what are the plans for her. Let's see what is the training performance plan. Let's see if she's going to step up to the plate if we assign her project X, Y, and Z. And it becomes a domino effect. Right? That is how you should perceive your career to be. The reason why you miss out on certain roles, the miss reason why you miss out on those opportunities is because perhaps no one in the organization even has an idea that you want to take on that role. Of course, everyone wants to get promoted. Everyone is aware that likely you do want to progress, but not everyone is aware of what exactly is the position, the project, or the aspirations that you want to fulfill in the next X years. Being vocal but not demanding is the name of the game. Okay? Gab Fabian is asking, do you think Six Sigma certification is enough to compensate my lack of diploma for me to qualify? I can't say this with an immediate yes or no because Six Sigma is just one certification. It depends on the role. It depends on the company culture. It depends on the job. You might be needing other certifications. But I think the essence of your question is, can I still succeed in the corporate world even if, let's say, I did not have a diploma or a course? And my answer is yes. Here's a quick tip. I would rather go for multinational companies, organizations that are based abroad, or organizations that have headquarters based abroad, but they happen to have a satellite company in the Philippines. Why? Sad to say, but it is the truth, a lot of companies based in the Western world are more progressive about taking in people who don't have any college courses or diploma. So... To give an example, I have lots of friends who work for Meta, formerly known as Facebook, and they don't have a college diploma. But they've had experiences in other past companies that are related to the job that they applied for and they were taken in. Okay? Okay. Uh, let's... Jewelson. Okay, let's answer this question from Jewelson. John, I'm asking on behalf of the ongoing applicants, how will they effectively talk about their qualifications versus the job they are applying for that will that they are applying that will not exceed nor lack in satisfying HR's questions? Our HRs, do HRs have the right to expect keywords over the strengths, even though they themselves most of the time don't know what is really needed by the hiring manager? Okay, so here's the unfair part. First and foremost, please take note that a lot of HR companies, especially the bigger ones, unfortunately do use artificial intelligence and certain software to filter resumes. What do I mean? If there are 500 applications or 1,000 applications, you will see that sometimes on LinkedIn, 200 people applied on Job Street, 400 people applied. It's going to be hard, and you have to put yourselves into the shoes of the recruiter. It's going to be hard for them to sort out one by one. So here's what I don't like. They use a software that searches for certain keywords in your resume. And if your resume contains that keyword, you will be shortlisted. So for example, let's say you're, ask, you're applying for an engineering job. And the job ideally requires an applicant to have knowledge of language like Python or C language or coding. Because it's a requirement, an ideal uh, requisite for being part of the job, only resumes that mention this in the resume okay, will be shortlisted. Somehow that is fair because if you really have that certification, you will likely mention it. But I also think it's unfair because you've gone past beyond qualifications without even identifying if there are other factors that can compensate the missing parts. But if that is the case, please take note. Unfortunately, that is how we have been evolving. That's how a lot of HR have been doing it. And so it is a reason why you probably do get missed out. So be mindful of which keywords are important for your job. If you're applying for a marketing job, one of the important things is to mention certain keywords such as social media, even including the name, the specific name of the platforms. 
Now, is this applied all the time for all organizations? Not. Not at all. There is no directory, however, that tells you which companies do it or don't. Okay? My take, however, is you know to circumvent this. And I'm going to go for the mathematical route. To circumvent this part, and sometimes you, know, you're, you feel like you're being cheated by the system. The best way is to increase your number of applications to as many companies as you can. Because you want to go for managing the probability. The probability that someone is going to contact you, check your resume, and ask you out for a job interview. Okay? Can I also just add, Jewelson, if you have an HR recruiter who is only looking for specific keywords during the job interview, I think it's a red flag. It is a bad recruiter because that means that they are not communicating with you. They're only waiting for the buzzword to be heard. And I don't like that kind of recruiter because they might be missing out on some other important aspects about my life and my career. Okay? I would not apply for these kinds of jobs, by the way. Um, and I think I deserve more so people can hear and listen to what I want to say. Okay, Brian Gira says facts. That's how I screen resume. I can't, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm sitting on a fence, but I can totally relate to why HR folks do that also. Okay, let's look at uh, TikTok now. Okay, Prince Chino from TikTok is asking, is it a ground for termination if the manager declines a psychological test? What do you mean? Do you mean that you guys have been requested to take a test and you did not want to take the test and therefore you're going to be terminated for it? Could you please clarify? Off the bat, this is illegal because you, you should have a proper ground for terminating people. Neither likely this is part of a breach of contract because you don't include in the contract that someone has to undergo that as well. Unless it is. So please be please clarify it. Okay, another question here. Guys, why, why are your questions tonight all about job applications? Is it job hunting season? Not that I'm complaining, I'm just saying. Okay, SG Gen Merch is asking on TikTok, is the non-compete clause for contracts even legal, okay? I've answered this already yesterday. It is legal if it's a consensus. If you signed up to it because you want to get the job, it will, okay? Technically, it will because it is not being forced onto you. You have the option to say, I don't want to accept the job. What is the rationale behind companies doing it? Because it's very normal that if you're working for a same company, for a company that is the direct competitor of company Y, you might be sharing confidential information that can disrupt or be the downfall of the other company that you're going to uh, leave, for example. What does non-compete mean? Okay, sorry, I forgot. Some people may not be familiar. The non-compete clause for contracts means that if you are working for a company that sells shampoo, you are not going to be allowed, according to your contract, to work afterwards, leave the company, and to move to another company that also sells shampoo. Because you might be sharing confidential information such as strategy, statistics, you know, agencies, all these things. So to prevent that from happening, companies put a non-compete clause wherein if you decide to quit your job, you cannot apply for a job in another competing company in the next two years, sometimes one year. Some companies are strict with three years, for example. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I've had the same. So when I worked for Globe Telecom, my contract states, this was way back in 2011, my contract stated that I cannot work for Smart if I decide to leave after two years, within two years. When I worked for GlaxoSmithKline, a pharmaceutical company, the non-compete clause was that I cannot work for Pfizer, I cannot work for Sanofi, also for one year. Same thing also for AirAsia when I worked for three years, 
my contract states that I cannot work for any other airline within the region, such as in Southeast Asia. Okay? So it is a strategy that some companies do. Okay, let's look for some more questions. I'm curious, guys, or maybe it's just the makeup of our participants tonight, but I've noticed a lot of you are asking about your contracts. Okay. Okay, Brian says, John, I saw you in Jensen. I was in a coffee shop, and then uh, hinabul kita para magpa-picture, pero... Mabilis ka maglakad. You know, a lot of my friends tell me that I do walk fast. Sorry for that. I do. I really do. And my answer is stupid, but I think it's also logical at the same time. I just think it's a waste of time to walk too slow. I think life should be all about efficiency, if that's the case. Okay. Uh, team, can I give away some prizes now to our participants? I hope that's okay. Let's give away some free tickets. So this time, I'm going to give away... Guys, I need to slow down the number of tickets I'm going to give. I've been called out by the SM... I've been called out by the SM folks saying, John, don't give away too many tickets, huh? So I can only give a few tonight, okay? I can't give 10. I'm going to give away... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have three trivia questions tonight. And each trivia question, we're going to have one winner. One winner on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and then one winner on TikTok. I hope that's okay. Yes. So what are the prizes? If you're checking our screen on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, these are the ones that I'm showing on my right side. See that? All five sessions. 1,299 pesos is the price of each ticket. So that's around 8,000 pesos worth of tickets. Okay, And you also get to bring a plus one. That is my promise to you. You guys are ready? Same thing also for our TikTok folks. What is our what's at stake? You get tickets to our June 21 and June 24 workshops at the SMX Convention Center in Fort BGC in SM Aura. So these are workshops about leadership, social media marketing, boosting your confidence, email etiquette and business writing, and finally last one is everything will be all right, which is a motivational power talk in the evening. Okay, you guys are ready? Wow, ready in a row. TikTok folks says that you're ready. Can I get the letter R in the chat box if you guys are ready, please? We'll appreciate that. Give me a category, by the way. What category would you like me to ask uh, about? I'm not ready tonight. What can we use as a category? Yesterday, I think we've had food or health. Uh, oh, can we talk about plants? Because I'm a plantito. I love talking about plants. Is that okay? Can we talk about plants? Yes. I hope that's cool. Okay. Let's do this. So, plants. Tell me under what category of plants? You guys are ready? <laughs> I can just imagine people checking their Google search even if I haven't yet asked a question. Okay, but here's my question. Under what category of plants does the bamboo, the humble bamboo, the Asian-inspired bamboo falls under? Okay, What category does it fall under? The bamboo. What type of plant is a bamboo? Okay, Fastest fingers win, huh? Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, in my remember, I'm only checking answers, the first one that comes out in my chat box. The first one, I think this guy already won before, right? First one, the correct answer is grass. Bamboo is a type of grass. It happens to be the tallest grass uh, in planet Earth, okay? So, my winner on Facebook is PJ by a border. Congratulations, PJ by a border. I think PJ have already won. So if you've already won, you might want to give away some of your tickets or tag along more people. On TikTok, my winner, okay, ladies and gentlemen, is 
The winner is Rose Sun. Rose Sun. As in Rose and the Sun, which is also a star, by the way. Congratulations. How do you claim your prize? Please send us a private message. We can give you instructions. We hope to see you in our upcoming sessions. Okay. <laughs> Some people are saying I was the first one. Guys, you may be the first one on your screen, but I have to base it from what I see from my screen. Okay. Let's continue our discussion. Again, we're still talking about regrets. Okay. How do you manage regrets? Regrets from not being able to pass on a job interview, being rejected from uh, a promotion, being rejected for a pitch for, to an, from an investor, etc. Let me look for some answer for some questions now. When will be re we'll be releasing the new episodes of our podcast from Grid to Great? I mentioned this uh, two days ago, September or August. And this one is going to be sponsored by uh, a certain company, which I cannot disclose yet, but it will be there. I promise you. Thank you for asking. For those who haven't yet uh, listened, and you will see that on Facebook, you will see that on the top. See that? Okay. You can listen to our podcast available on Spotify. It's called From Grit to Great. And it's co-hosted by my brother, Jed. We talk about career management, leadership, being able to speak confidently at work. We talk about travels, anything under the sun about being the best version of who you are. Oh, there's a PSA here from PJ because he's so good in answering our questions. For those interested for other trainings, I can give my other tickets. I just want to attend the evening session and see Tanjiro. Okay. Tanjiro, by the way, PJ is spelled T-A-N-J-I-R-O. Named after my favorite character on in Demon Slayer. Oh, so I'm showing PJ's name on Facebook. Participants, you can just message him directly and you can ask for free tickets if you like. Okay. Let's, I think this is the fourth question now. Let's answer the, the next one. Is regret, okay, I like this question from TikTok, from user8832, is regret similar with bitterness? There are some overlaps, but I think you can be regretful, but you don't need to be bitter. You can be bitter, but likely you're also regretful because you are, you know, your feelings are negatively inclined given the situation, okay? You can be regretful, but you can be very positive and excited because ah, I missed I missed that job interview. The recruiter said I should have said this or I did not mention this. Okay, but I've got three more interviews. Okay, I'm going to do better. Okay, let's do this. That's being regretful, but you're still positive and excited. Being bitter is, ah, you know, I think the reason why the interviewer did not accept me is because she didn't like how I spoke. I mentioned something about you know, BTS is not a good band at all. And she said that she's a big fan. Maybe she didn't like it. I think that's bitterness. Okay, so those two things. But very good question. Thank you for raising that. Okay. Um, wow, you guys have lots of questions. I just need to choose ones that... Are different. Uh, okay, I have another one here. This is from this is from Janus from TikTok. Okay, so Janus is asking John. Okay, this one's long. Okay, Janus says Janus says on TikTok, John. I said something to a client that I regret. It was during lunch and I cracked a joke that I think offended them. And two weeks later on, I found out that they are not renewing our contract. 
something tells me that the reason why is because of what I said. It might not be the reason, but I still feel bad about it. I have already apologized, and the person said that everything is okay, but I don't think that the apology is I don't think that the apology was properly accepted. How do I move on from this? It bugs me every night. I shouldn't have said it. Okay, wow. You know, I can relate to this. I've had, I think I've had moments when I was way younger, way, way young, like 24, 25 years old, when you said something in the middle of the meeting. It also involved either a client or an agency, and it changed the way what you said changed the way they perceived you as a person. Okay. Can I get an exclamation mark from our participants? If you can relate with this experience, you said something that it just doesn't make you sleep well at night. Anyone? Okay. So, well, two things. One, which saves me a lot of time from giving advice, the fact that you have already apologized about it and the fact that you feel so bad about it means that you have accepted that you have done something wrong. You're already halfway through. That's a good thing. Okay? Not everyone admits their own mistakes. To the, in today's time, not everyone does. Number two, there has to be some point where you have to let go because if you define your career based on one mistake, it will swallow you as a whole to the point that the next time you do a meeting, it's the only thing that runs your mind. You tend now to hold back speaking in a meeting, even if you know that what you're talking about is correct, but you hold back because what stops you is the thought that whatever happened to that client might happen again. You're going to end up becoming a prisoner of your own trauma. You have to let it go. Here's a tip. You know, probably that person that you said this bad words or comments, maybe they've forgotten about it. And they're not even thinking about you anymore. So I, it's easier said than done, obviously. There's no magic pill. I just can't simply say and be condescending and tell you, you have to let it go. But I rather want you to have that closure within yourself that number one, you have already apologized. And the person said that they are already okay with it. If they really mean it or if they don't mean it, that's outside your control already. You cannot do anything about it. You have to let go. Number three, look at the bright side. If you are young, assuming that you are, because I'm looking at your photo on TikTok, you seem to be young. Maybe you're in your 20s. I would see this as an opportunity where I would tell to myself, I'm 24, I'm 25. I know that this, should, this, this, that, that this didn't need to happen, but at least it happened at an age where I'm young and I can correct this mistake as I grow older. This is better than committing this mistake only when I'm in my 40s or 50s and, my, and I'm already a CEO and the mistake becomes a million-dollar mistake. Okay? I'd rather fail fast and fail quickly and fail early so I can apply them to my million-dollar decisions that I need to take on later. I would look at that bright side. That's actually how I perceive, that's my mantra in life. Whenever I make mistakes, I say, you know, it's better I've done this mistake early so that I get to improve how I perceive things and how, I, I'll, I'll give an example again. So uh, you guys watch this Netflix TV series called Black Mirror. Can I get the letter B if you guys view? Black Mirror? Black Mirror? Yes. So Black Mirror it refers to the black mirror on your phone because everything is all about future. So it talks about people interactions. It could be drama, comedy, it could be romance, but it always involves future technology that pervades into our lives. Okay. So one of my favorite episodes is season four. I forgot which episode, but my favorite episode is Hang the DJ. Can I get the letter H? If you can, if you have seen that episode, if you have, wow, we're soulmates already. <laughs> Anyone, letter H, anyone has seen this episode? So Hang the DJ is an episode wherein you have to be paired up with someone romantically and you have to be paired up with multiple people, multiple times. You have to make mistakes until you get it right, until you are finally matched with the right partner. 
So the system assumes that you have to undergo a lot of failures in relationships for the system to find out who is the perfect match for you. In that episode, unfortunately, there this this couple where they can't understand why they can't be together all the time. I don't want to spoil it to you, but you have to watch it. But I think regrets are like announcements in life that here's a mistake. You've done it. We can't do much about it anymore. But here's another opportunity that if you happen to face that same issue in the future, you can finally get it right because you found out how to get it right. So that's how I would see it as well. I'm looking at the chat box. Is there anyone who... I feel so sad. There aren't much folks who watch who have seen that episode. Okay. <laughs> Try to watch it, guys. It's, it's one of my favorite episodes and also series on Netflix. Brian, please watch my TED Talk on YouTube. Okay, Brian, could you please send me a direct message and tell me what that title or link is? I'll watch it. Thank you. Okay, let's look at some more questions. Oh, Wit says I will watch. Okay, TikTok question again. What can you say to a 40-year-old worker who isn't a boss yet? Is there such an age for, a su for success? Ooh, I like this question. Okay, let's throw this into a poll, okay, for the participants. Uh, please answer this question. Should you define success by being a manager at least before you turn 40 years old. Okay? Yes or no? Does one become successful only if they have become a manager before they turn the age of 40? I'm not going to say 30 because I think 30 is too much high of a standard. Okay? And if I'm going to make a converse question, can you say that you are not as successful as you should be if you're still not a manager by the age of 40? Okay, so I'm looking at the chat box. Uh, oh, Jerus Vergara on TikTok says, no, success varies in the path that you travel. Okay, some people are typing no. A lot of people are typing no. Some people are also typing yes. Okay, I'm going to answer this in two in two routes. One is the mathematical route. The second one is the philosophical route. The mathematical route here is everything is a matter of space and time. And that is the earlier you get promoted, obviously, the more you have years left for you to be promoted further. What does this mean? If you got promoted as a manager in your early 20s or in your early 30s, then there's a good chance that if you're aspiring for a CEO position, you'll be able to get there by the time that you reach the age of 40 or 50, okay? So it's a time-space uh, analogy, uh, logic here, right? And it's not a complicated logic. It's just how life is. My philosophical answer, however, is, and I've answered this before, everyone blooms in their own time, meaning... It just so happened that given different circumstances, you probably had a new family. You probably got into some health issues. You probably had a bad manager. You probably were not excited and enlightened yet such that you didn't give your best, if that was an issue, for you to get promoted. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be successful because I will also say this. People often think that we have to look at Mark Zuckerberg as the definition and the poster boy of success because he founded Facebook at the age of 20. But when you look at the statistics, okay, you can check this on Google. There are a lot of posters about this. Majority of the world's most successful CEOs or founders of startup companies were only able to do so in their 40s as well. So there is no timeline. I don't think that you have to race against each other in terms of your specific route. Okay? 
it's advantageous to get it done as early as you can because you have more space later on. But what can you do? Right? We all face different circumstances. Some of us are lucky to have the most amazing bosses. Some of us have just really bad bosses. And that could have been the reason why you didn't get promoted quickly. Okay? I'm also going to add this into the equation. Obviously, if you're younger, you have more energy. You have more propensity to sleep late and to sleep less hours. That's going to give you, obviously, again, advantage to be promoted quickly because that means you're willing to give more time. When you're in your 40s, you probably have a family. You know, you need more hours of sleep. Perhaps sometimes you get tired easily. You're not probably as open to using technology as you were when you were in your 20s. So these are some non-negotiables in life that you have to consider as well. Okay, let me answer this question. Very good question from Virgilio Vargas, by the way. So Virgilio Vargas here is asking this question. How do you handle rejection of your idea without sounding offended and still want to express or finish your idea? This is for a scenario wherein you're being cut while you are expressing your idea. Okay, before I do this, can I throw again another poll? I think everyone has experiences in their life. Give me an exclamation mark if you have experienced being interrupted during a meeting or during a phone call when you're not yet even finished with what you want to say. You haven't even concluded yet. Okay, I think everyone can relate to that. It's not a good feeling. Some people will see it as a sign of disrespect. Some people, sometimes, I don't all the time, um, sometimes I can understand why the person interrupted me. It's because they were just so excited and passionate that they want to build on my ideas. That's also very possible. If someone, however, interrupts me, and again, it might depend on your style, but I think I can pull off the way I communicate. I will tell the person, oh, Joanna, before you do that, can I still finish this first? And then I will finish it. Okay. Sometimes the way to do that is to continue what you need to say. And then you let the person fade away. That's another way of doing that. Sometimes I'm going to let the other person interrupt if they really need to, but I'm going to let them know that they did it rudely. So I'll say something like, oops, okay, I think you need to say something so important. I'm going to let you speak, right, for now. And I'm going to let them speak as well. Okay. If the person was interrupting because they were rejecting your idea, okay, and at the end of the conversation, you you realize that your idea is not wrong or right, right? That's where I'm gonna call out the person, and say thank you. I understand. So here's where gratitude sometimes works. You can tell them, you know, thank you for the enthusiasm, thank you for the passion. However, X, Y, and Z, and then simply explain. If, however, on the flip side, you are proven wrong and you agree that you were proven wrong in the middle of the conversation. Be thankful as well and say, okay, thank you for that thought. Thank you for correcting me. I'll make sure that I include that in the next part. Thank you for that input. Okay. Thank you for the suggestion. Thank you for the concern. I'll say that. Can I just make a... Can I turn the tables around? Whenever you interrupt... May I also recommend that when you do interrupt, interrupt with grace and interrupt with politeness that you are perceived by the other person to be interrupting because you want to build on their idea. So I would say something, sometimes when I interrupt, I'd say something like, ah, John, time out. Can I ask something first? And then I'll interrupt. I also say something, sometimes I use bridging sounds. I'd say something like, ah, Hmm. Why does that work? And it might sound petty. That works because when you're saying some sounds, you're uttering some vowels. It's already shaping the mind of the other person that you also want to say something next. Okay? Such that it makes their guards go lower. Okay? Another one. If you want to interrupt, but you're also agreeing with what they are saying... Be explicit with the agreement and say something like, ah, I agree, I agree, I agree. 
and then inter- and then state your interjection. Why is that important? If you're very clear at the start that you are uh, interrupting because you want to build on their idea or you want to interrupt them, their guard's going to go down because they are made aware that you are not there to rebut, but to support what they're saying. Does that make sense? Can I get an exclamation mark? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Carl Daryl on Facebook is asking this question. I am shifting careers. I am 33 years old. I had to stop working for three years to get medication for cancer. I regret starting this late. Can you share advice? Number one, it can't be helped. It is what it is. Okay, These are things that we cannot control ourselves. And so I'm... And I cannot speak for your story, right? Because I'm not in the same position as well. What I would think, however, is during those times that you were under medication, Carl, during those times that you had struggles, and now that I would assume that you're eventually able to go back to work again because you were able to manage your condition, identify what are the top three things that you have learned from that and identify what those three things that made you more powerful, stronger, and resilient. I would put that into a piece of paper if you can. This is me being cheesy. I would put that in a laminated or in a, you know, I'm going to post it on my wall. Because every time I feel so down, I'm going to look at that sheet of paper and say, no one in this world understands how I feel and not everyone undergoes the same hardships that I have. But I was able to get through it. And for that reason, I am proud of myself. If I was able to manage this past three years, I can further manage all other future uh, challenges as well. I know it sounds cheesy. For some people, it may be. But not everyone has your same story. And the fact that you're able to manage it is something that you should be proud of to begin with. Okay? My dog, Tanjiro, is bugging me now. <laughs> You've gone out now. Okay. He want, I think he wants to be on TV again. Do you want... You want to show yourself, Cam? Cam, Cam, Cam. Okay. Oh, he wants to be on TV again. Oh, ayun na. See? So this is weird. Every time he sees the camera and the laptop, he just goes, he just stops because he knows that his face is being shown already. No? No, Tanjiro? Cam? <laughs> uh, shall we go down na? You're okay now. Ayan na. Okay. He's got his airtime already. I'm wearing shorts lang, ah, by the way. <laughs> Some TikTok folks might be seeing I'm wearing shorts only. Okay. When did I start practicing this type of speaking? Says yours truly on TikTok. When I was in college, I was part of the varsity debate team. So I guess, and because I love debating, Oh, since high school, actually, I was a part of the varsity debate team. I think that honed my love for being able to express. I also come from humble beginnings. So for that reason, I've had many moments in my life where I felt that I was deprived of a lot of things in life. And I was deprived because I did not speak up. I did not ask for it. I did not fight for it. So as I grew older, I told myself, one of the most powerful ways to get what you want in life is to vocalize it. And that made me further inspired to hone speaking, the skill of speaking. Okay, So here's where I'm going to say talent and skill can't just be done by virtue of practice. There needs to be sometimes a deeper motivation to why you want to do it. Okay, I think we can do two more questions. Sorry, guys. I need, I, I've been doing overtime lately. I need to sleep maybe around 11 or 11.30 because I have a, I'm going to be fetched at 6 a.m., 6.30, and I, that means I have to walk my dog at 5 a.m. Okay. Let's answer some question. Uh, one more question on TikTok and then one more question on Facebook. Oh, before that, by the way, can I... Let's give away prize again because we haven't given away the second round. Okay. 
My second prize are tickets to my motivational power talk. Since you guys are after motivation, okay? A motivational power talk on June 24, Saturday, 5.30 to 7 o'clock p.m. It's called Everything Will Be All Right, which is inspired by our latest book available in National Bookstore. The ticket is 499 pesos. We've made it very accessible for you guys because I want you all to come. It's a one and a half hour talk with Q&A session about careers and success. And my pet dog, Tanjiro, was given permission by SMX to be in the session. So I'm going to bring him. He's going to be asking a lot uh, from you guys, your hugs. So if you don't want to come because of me, come because you want to see Tanjiro instead. Okay, so I want to give away one ticket, one ticket for Facebook, one ticket for LinkedIn, one ticket for YouTube, and one ticket for, uh, sorry, two tickets for TikTok. Now, because I want to give chance to others, I cannot call out the names of those who have already won tickets in the past. I hope that's okay. Yes? All good? TikTok folks, could you please give me an exclamation mark if you're all cool with that? Facebook. LinkedIn, YouTube as well. Give me an exclamation mark. Please also give us a like if you still haven't yet liked this live session. That's the only thing that we're asking for uh, you guys for this session. Okay. So trivia question again. So this trivia question is, can I do a question about technology? Is that okay with you guys? Technology question. Yes. So here is my question. Ready na kayo? If you've been looking at the news, you'll be able to know what this is. Okay. My question is, Apple just recently announced a new addition into their gadgets. This one is around 3,000 US dollars. Very expensive, right? Tell me what is the name of that gadget, okay? What is the name of this gadget? Okay, I'll give you a few seconds. Again, only one winner per platform and then two winners on TikTok. You guys are so fast, lightning fast, huh? Congratulations. So the correct answer is it's your Apple Vision Pro. Yeah. Hey, Apple Vision Pro. So, or the Vision Pro. Okay. So let me call out two winners on TikTok. So you guys will have two tickets each, one for you and one for your plus one, so that you don't go alone. And I understand that it's not always good to come alone. Okay. So my winners on TikTok first are the following. First winner is RSS L R B L S. Grabe naman yung pangalan. Pinapahirapan nyo ako. R-S-S-L-R-B-L-S. The second winner is J-M. Congratulations on TikTok. J-M. Okay? And on one for Facebook, the winner is Facebook. Okay, LinkedIn muna because LinkedIn came first. Winner on LinkedIn is Mary Lawrence T. Mary Lawrence T on LinkedIn. And then the winner on uh, Facebook is Josie Dungo. Congratulations, Josie Dungo. And then the winner on YouTube is Elmer Ventura. Elmer Ventura. Okay, it's the Apple Vision Pro. So it's like your, you know, your virtual reality glasses. It's Technically, a smartphone, a computer. It's just that you don't need your usual devices for it. Okay. Okay. I think we can cover last two questions before we end our session. Oh, sige. Could you please cut and paste your questions again? Some of them have been buried already, so sorry for that. Nico Alberto says, my nine-year-old has been telling me about it just a while ago. He's sleeping now. Okay. People are typing in the chat box, eyesight. Sangaling yun? Eyesight? 
Probinsya Girl saying financial literacy po sana next topic. Uh, I haven't done that for quite a while. We can. We can consider that. Yes. Where can you buy tickets? Um, you can buy tickets at jonathanyabut.com. Okay? jonathanyabut.com. Okay, Tanjiro. See, Tanjiro's like, he's so... He wants to be in the camera again. Okay, last two questions. Let's cover one. Tanji, wait lang. Let's cover one on TikTok again. By the way, sorry. Let me let me just answer some admin questions. What is the roster of training sessions for July? Well, we do the same thing for July because we do all the topics every month. They're all repeated for different batches of classes. Okay. Oh, I like this. Yuki in Cebu is asking, how do you deal with a boss who calls you after work hours? I've had this type of bosses. So two things. Number one, I want you to be able to communicate without explicitly telling it to your boss that you have spent enough time in the office, that you have done your job. So for example, if you're doing an 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. job and you're already in the office by 7 a.m. or 8 o'clock, I would make sure that my emails are sent immediately when I arrive just so people are aware that that is already my start of my shift or my start of my job. This way, by virtue of implicitly telling it to them, I want them to know that I have been diligently present and I have been diligently accomplishing my tasks as early as 7 or 8 a.m. Okay? That's one. Number two, and the reason why I want to say I want to imply that to my team is because I want them to know that I have earned my ability to shut down after 5 or 6 p.m. Because I also have a family to go back to afterwards. Okay? So that's one. Do that because some people sometimes feel that they have the license to call you late at night because they started their work also late at night which I find unfair. If you're the one who came to the office at 10 o'clock in the morning, that's my problem, not yours. I know you're compensating at 7 or 8 p.m. because you came late. I didn't. I came on time. I've done my deeds. I've been responsible. So if I need to go back home early, it's not because I am scrimping on my shift. It's because I've done what I needed to do. Okay? That's one. Number two, if you have a boss who keeps on persistently doing this, I would do a confrontation, a one-on-one, -on -one, heart to heart talk with my boss and say, boss, I understand that there are a lot of things that need to be done, but two things. Number one, can I negotiate if this can be done instead tomorrow? Because I am currently attending to my family. I'm having dinner. I'm having X, Y, and Z. Okay? Sometimes your manager is asking you to do it, but when they are prompted with the question that if it can wait and they can wait, they will let you do it the next day. Now, if it really can't wait, there are moments wherein you're going to let it pass for tonight. But you also tell them that in the future, and again, easier said than done. I'm going to say this. Not everyone will be able to tell this to your boss. I totally get it. Okay, So it will require a level of art on how to say this. But I would tell my boss, boss, okay, I'm going to submit this to you. But may I request that the next time around, I will appreciate if my time with my family during dinner is also given importance because this is the only time that I'm able to spend quality time with them. You know what I learned about Filipino bosses and folks? That sometimes when you use your family as a reason for pausing or for whatever it is, people tend to stay back. Right? They tend to hold back. They tend to be more understanding of the situation. So go. Name drop. <laughs> Mention that you have a family to attend to and you, they're very important also for you. People are asking, how do you claim your prize? Send me a private message, please. Send me a private message. We can give you the instructions on how to claim it. Um, how do you, um, John, how can we reach out to you for a private talk? You can send me a private message. Uh, we can be easily found on Google search. I promise you that. 
And our email address is also uh, available there. Okay, Jonathan Yabut at gmail.com if you guys are interested. Oh, Yuki and Cebu says, I tried mentioning my family. Dead malang daw. Question, Yuki, can I just deep do a deep dive? Is everyone in the organization staying long as well? Is it really the culture of the organization that everyone is okay? Everyone tend to receive phone calls, even dinner time. Because if that's the case, then your issue is not your boss. Your issue is the entire company. If the entire company is supportive of it, you're going to have a hard time managing your boss alone. Because if it's part of what people expect from others, you're calling for a systemic change, not a behavioral change of your boss. Okay? I don't want to say that my immediate conclusion is go and look for greener pastures. Obviously, you, there will be other reasons for you to stay. But this is one of your considerations always. Whenever you apply for a new job or seek a new company, you always have to consider the company culture in terms of respecting people's personal time. Hello World says, Sir, please make a podcast. We do have. We're on season two. Please check us out on Spotify. And the title of our podcast is From Grit to Great. We talk about careers as well. Okay, let's look for one last, uh, one last question. Okay, let's cover this one. This one is also about uh, career rejection. Okay, wow, I like this one. So this is from YouTube. This is from. Ismael. Ismael is saying, John, a year ago, in the middle of my presentation, I was asked by my boss to stop and to sit down. And she was the one who continued the presentation on my behalf. And I, on my behalf, leaving me ashamed. And up until today, I still think about it. I feel traumatized after that situation. What do you suggest that I should do? Okay. I wish I can get more stories and details about this, but number one, what prompted your boss to stop you in the middle of your presentation? Technically shaming you because it's, it's very shameful for someone to be asked to sit down in the middle of an audience, right? So I wanted to know why. It's, I think bosses are rational creatures. They will not just ask you to sit down for the sake of wanting to shame you. Right? Maybe you have the most evil person in the world, but I will give them the benefit of the doubt that there was probably something that you did that was lacking, that was asked repeatedly over and over again, and you were not able to fulfill it, such that they ask you to sit down. If that is the case, I want you to focus on that. I want you to, number one, consider that yes, your boss probably will likely did not do it the right way because I'm a believer that when you praise someone, you praise them publicly. But when you apprehend someone, you apprehend them privately. And your boss didn't do that, obviously. Okay, So if you had the boss who did, I wish, well, it's already been a year, so you're only telling this now, of course, so because it still haunts you. In the future, if ever this future, uh, if this happens in the future again, I would recommend that you talk to that manager and say how you felt about what they did. Because you have to let them know and you cannot let it slip away, making the manager think that this is totally, it's totally fine to shame people that can ruin how they perceive their careers for the rest of their lives. Okay. So if you can, please do that in the future. Number two, well, moving forward, please know that this does not define you. This does not define you because being asked to sit down is something that you can easily bounce back from. Can I get a letter A as in amen? And let's say that to our uh, to Ismael here. Can I get a letter A from all our participants? Being asked to sit down in the middle of a presentation is something that you can bounce back from. 
Yes, it is. Okay. When I was young, I've had many moments when I froze on stage. I had many moments when I kept on babbling about something that I shouldn't have continued talking about. And I'm able to bounce back from it. You are not defined by your past mistakes. You are defined by what you do after you commit that mistake and how you make the most out of that mistake. Can I get another letter A as in amen? If you can agree. Okay. So here's where speaking of the orientation of time, be more of the future oriented person when it comes to this situation. Do not let the past linger too much. Okay. Yes. I, okay, I'm going to end Gladiators in Suits because I need to prepare for tomorrow. Unfortunately, I will not be able to go online because I'm coming from a trip for a talk. Uh, might go online on Saturday night or Monday night. Depends. Okay. Uh, Monday, by the way, is a holiday in the Philippines. So if you happen to have a three-day weekend, I don't. I have to work. Then I wish you all the best. Stay safe and recharge. Relax. You deserve it so you can be ready. Halfway through 2023 now. I can't believe it. I thought it's still January. We're already halfway through now. Okay? So thank you. And again, if you're interested to get uh, to enroll in our workshops, you can visit our website, jonathanyabut.com. I'm also going to be announcing that we have now opened the registration. If you happen to be in the north, if you happen to be in Olongapo or in Clark on July, I know this is still far, but I'm, I need to announce this now. On July 7, we are conducting our same workshops in SMX Olongapo. And we're doing the same thing in SMX Clark on July 8. So if you happen to be from the north or if you have a friend who happens to be working and living in the north, we hope you spread the news. We're going to be there to engage a lot of folks. A lot of BPOs, we've been told, are in Clark as well. Okay? If you'd like to get copies of our best-selling books from Grit to Great, so I'm showing that display now on the screen, right? You can catch them in leading bookstores, national bookstore, fully booked. You can also go, go to Lazada and Shopee to get those copies. And they're all about career management and success as well. Okay. Stay safe, guys. Thank you. Bye.